Hi dear friends. No, I'm not going to do a video on garden. You're going to talk about uh, freedom. Somebody asked me about it. I didn't know what to say. When we are talking about freedom, we have a whole lot of ideas in our minds. In the current world view, we see a few different visions of uh, freedom, but in general, uh, people have quite a libertarian idea in their mind that they can choose to do whatever they want. And when they choose to do whatever they want, they feel they have the right to do it in the way that they do it, and that nobody can interfere with that. And the fact that there's rules and regulations in a the country, uh, they are subservient to our own libertarian views. Uh, in general, we can say that freedom is a freedom of choice. So that means that having a supermarket with a lot of different kind of food products is a freedom. A food shop with only one product, like in the paintings of Andy Warhol, where only the red beans, uh, red beans or tomato sauce were in the painting, then uh, you speak of a lack of freedom. and our willingness to have fragmented minds and to act in all kinds of different directions uh, with our choices, this is also a freedom. We also very often see that we take the freedom to go on a holiday and not take care of our health, which of course is a little bit strange because you know, taking care of your health helps you to develop freedoms. But these are completely different in order. And we have to therefore investigate what is the nature of freedom to understand what kind of freedom we are talking about. Because apparently there is not just one freedom. There are a lot of different kinds of freedoms in this world. And it depends very much on the situation, what you mean with freedom. So we'll go through a few basic ideas. One of the basic ideas in our modern culture is based on the ideas of Immanuel Kant. And for this we have to ask ourselves a few questions. We live currently in a world with a lot of different kind of world views on freedom. And the libertarian view probably is the most common one where we feel like we can say whatever we want based on the fragmentations of our mind. And we are also prepared to change our mind to say something else tomorrow than today because, you know, it suits us better to say it uh, tomorrow like this and today like that. In general, we can say there are different political needs for freedom or lack of freedom, and we have to also probably address that. And there's at this moment, well, if I just generalize, there are three main of freedom that I want to discuss. I'm not talking about all the different kinds of freedoms there are because there are a lot of different kinds of ones. Uh, and it's the European, the American, and the Chinese ones. And in China, for instance, when I lived there, and I lived there for about 15, 16, almost 70 years. In this time, I experienced China, especially in the beginning, as being really extremely free. Uh, I felt like there was like this government layer, which took a kind of authoritarianism, but there, underneath there, there was this like anarchist, chaotic, unruly and unruled society where everybody basically could just do whatever they want and uh, they could bribe people and they could do all kinds of other things to make sure that they wouldn't be bothered too much unless when they became too big and too powerful and then at that moment uh, government authorities they would interfere in general uh, i had the notion there like okay freedom in a country like china is the freedom to consume to have the financial means to live a, a prosperous life so that you don't have to think twice about what you have and it's understandable because when I came there, the average salary for people when I came there the first time was between 100 
and uh, three hundred dollars, a surgeon would get like two hundred or three hundred dollars, and a worker would get something like a hundred dollars, and that is not uh, a lot of money if you think about it. So whole families they were working to make uh, ends meet, and but at the same time I felt as a Westerner, of course, I had a lot of freedom. I think maybe that's the best definition because the freedoms that of the people in China, they were restricted by their poverty. So their poverty created uh, being bound by economic needs to work. And that's of course not a very healthy situation because it creates stress and stress creates a numbness in your head and a buzziness. And also at a certain point, the premature aging and disease and dying. Freedom to say whatever you want was there, but you had to package it properly. Mm -hmm. Chinese diplomats that I meet, met and also uh, governors and mayors from cities and police commissioners, uh, industrials. They all appreciated somebody to speak their mind. I had to really learn to focus my mind on what I wanted to say. So I realized that Chinese people usually they prepare what they're going to say and then they know for who is the audience. So they say it for that audience to be acceptable. I remember one time a meeting with uh, my Sifu and uh, the mayor of uh, Hong Kong. And it was Chinese New Year. I was the only foreigner there. And the farmers, they started a rebellion against the governor because they wanted to have certain kind of things done in their city, which were done actually afterwards. And then when I was, I was befriending this governor and he at certain point said like, look, it is not that we from the Communist Party, we are, we are not thinking free about all kinds of things because we have a lot of problems in our country and we need to resolve them. But it is a very slow uh, process where change because of the complexities of our problems and of our society is very gradual. And sometimes it goes for a few years forward and a few years backward. So it's more like the wave of the sea and to see which direction we can go. And so they felt a little bit like floating. And that was actually pretty profound, I thought. When I went to America, I felt very unfree because all the policing and all the people with guns, because I continuously had to watch my uh, behavior in the hope that nobody would shoot me because they would be offended. And the general level of education was usually so low in average that it was difficult to have like a serious conversation with people. And in the people that I came to meet in general, they were all educated people and they were very scared for all kind of precise or things that they would say in public. They are scared when you come into the country, there's all this policing and you're being driven like a sheep uh, through these customs. And you can see that everybody's already accusing you of being there for the wrong reason. And, and it makes me think a little bit about the uh, Paul Verhoeven movie uh, about the war with aliens. Uh, starship troopers where that kind of society was already created where a minority actually ruled and a majority they ruled outside the, the scope of citizen rights and that means that they basically militarized the citizenship in, in a way and that you see what they are doing by addressing people's patriotism and so on and so on these things have only become worse but now in Europe we have the same problem foreigners here they experience the same thing and now in China, because of the need to take revenge, uh, they start doing the same thing. So when you come there, you become less appreciated as a guest. But that is just the reality of it, how it is here in Europe. Because of our many Babylonic languages, uh, there is so much speech where whatever, whoever says whatever they want, there is not much listening being done. There's a lot of talking being done, but not much listening. So very constructive uh, cooperation between people and groups. Uh, is not really <coughs> taking place. And that is a little bit of a pity, of course. But we have a history of the concept of freedom. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, the origin of the ideas of uh, you know, freedom. So uh, let's discuss Immanuel Kant. If you don't know Immanuel Kant, what do you know about modern culture? Nothing very much, because you don't understand much of the roots of modern culture. Uh, he explain things and rationalize things in a way which makes it very clear where our society is going to with uh, philosophical trends like existentialism. 
postmodernism, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, psychiatry, medicalization of disease, uh, sociology, and so on and so on. All these kind of things, they're all dependent on the ideas first mm, compiled, maybe first analyzed by Immanuel Kant. He lived from 1724 to 1804 and he made a difference between libertarian freedom where you have a choice, a uh, choice on the basis of your thoughts and of your desires, your feelings. And this is what he called the idea of freedom. So it is not a real freedom, it's just the idea of freedom. And what uh, Kant denies here as a freedom is that kind of freedom is instinctual and animal-like. And this instinctual and animal-like freedom is driven. It is not, no, like, willed, you can say. There is no will in it. There is just a want, a desire. This is also a distinction that takes a long time to understand in the Chinese language. Kant suggests that freedom is the ability to govern one's own actions on the basis of reason, on the basis of clear thinking over what you're going to do and why. He did not advocate following your desires. Uh, he thought that was actually a little bit silly and he didn't have it all by himself. Uh, somebody like Swedenborg, who even started his own religion, uh, was actually there already before him. In Confucianism, the same idea is also present, and there it's called uh, doing things in the appropriateness of the time, of the moment. And in Taoism, that is also emphasized to be timely, uh, to do things in the right time, in the right way, in the right form, in the right feeling, uh, not as an exact science like what we do in our Kantian views but as a intuition, you can say, towards uh, a realization about what is appropriate. And that means also doing things uh, in spite of oneself, because the growth of a decision is depending for a large degree on the necessity of the times. Kant called this concept autonomy. Autonomy relates as a word to a Greek word which indicates self-legislation. So that make, means that you make your own laws, you make your own regulation, like how people feel about traffic laws. Traffic laws, you know, they tell you to go left or right or something like this. But many people, they just make their own laws and they suggest that traffic laws actually are guidelines. And we see that sometimes also happen with the laws of a country, that people see them as guidelines. And it might actually be better if people see it like that, because that helps them to find a moral raison d'etre in their in their in their existence and why they do things and why it is good that they do it and why it is maybe not so good when they do that. When we talk about libertarian freedom, Kant calls that an enslavement to your desires and your feelings. And it is not that much different from what they say in the Far East. In effect, you also have to understand, of course, what is reason. But let's do that in another video, because it takes a long time to discuss uh, reason. And, uh, yeah, let's do that another time. <laughs>